let's do this. Let's turn in our Bibles to John chapter 7. And I'm going to share something with you. Like I said earlier, it can change your life. It can save your life. It can stir you up. It'll inspire you. It'll empower you. One thing I like about the Lord and about true Christianity is it's not a powerless religion. It is a powerful relationship with God where you can tap into anything you will ever need in this life for yourself or for people you're called to minister to. Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. And, you know, I believe we're living in a time right now, too, where our commitments to God are going to be challenged. Our commitments to our church, our commitments to the things of God, our commitments to what's right are going to be challenged more than ever. There's more worldly polls now than I think there have ever been in our generation. And the only thing that's going to keep us 100% sturdy and steady and on the right road is our love for Him. Our intimate daily fellowship, our relationship with the Lord, because lights are going to get bright, lust is being turned up, all kinds of things are happening, and the only thing that's going to be keep us on course in these last days is our ongoing love relationship with the Lord. I mean, the fancy light shows could be gone, the music could stop, the chairs could be gone, we have to sit on a concrete floor. Guess what? Those that love the Lord will still be here, forsake, not forsaking the assembling of themselves together, as the manner of some is, especially so much more as you see the day approaching, the day of the coming of the Lord. And I just, I wanted to say that because the Bible talks about an hour of temptation coming on the earth that shall try the whole world at the end times. Temptations are being turned up. And the only thing that's going to keep us steady and secure is our love for Him. Amen. You start doing things first and foremost because you love the Lord, not because of the blessings. Hello, church. How many of you like the blessings of God? I do too. How many of you like the blesser even more than the blessings? And that's where we got to get. I mean, you know, some, the blessing can get to be too much sometimes in your life. And God may say, I want you to give that up. A lot of times he just wants the willingness to be there. And so never forget this. Your greatest blessing is him. Right? Your greatest blessing that he's ever given you is himself. The other things that he gives us are great and wonderful, but the greatest blessing is him. And so just stay in an awesome love fellowship with him every day. And you'll find yourself not even asking yourself if you feel like doing it. You just do what he wants you to do. We said, what was it last week, that faith never asks, is it easy? Well, love never asks, well, is it easy? If it is, I'll do it. Love doesn't even ask that. Love just does what the one they love wants them to do. So, Father, we pray as we go on in this service that you would just give us continuous revelation of what we need to hear right now so we can fulfill your perfect will in Jesus' name. We thank you for it. Amen. John chapter 7. All right, John 7. Let's read this verse of Scripture, and I'll tell you what I believe the title is for this message this morning. John 7, in verse 37 through 39. Are you ready, church? Say, I'm ready. Amen. Say, my life will never be the same after today, in Jesus' name. Verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried. Now, I looked up the word cried. It doesn't mean he shed tears. It means he screamed. In other words, what he's about ready to say is one of the most passionate things in the whole New Testament because I don't see any other scriptures where it said he screamed. He screamed something out here because he was very passionate about it. How many think what he's passionate about, we should probably be passionate about? And what he thinks is, ah, we got to think is, ah. He, at the great day of the feast, Jesus cried, saying, If any man, any man, thirst, not just Jewish men and women, any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Now, there's a lot of people that come to the Lord and think, you know, how does this work? I don't, this doesn't make sense. I, I'm a logical person. I don't understand born again. No, you need to turn your brain off, you understand, and get it renewed to the Word and just drink. 
from what the Lord has for you, it'll change your life. How about let's have a drink together? The right kind of drink. Hey, if you drink this, you don't want any other kind of drink. Okay, next scripture. Jesus said, He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of this person's belly shall flow rivers of living water. Belly is talking about your heart, your spirit, the inner man. Jesus said, if you're a believer, there's some steps you can take to where rivers of living water, in other words, divine help to a falling apart world all around you will come out of you and help those people supernaturally if believers take this next step. Everybody say next step. Come on. The first step was what? Receiving Jesus. What's the next step? Receiving the Holy Spirit in full. That's what he says. Go back to that scripture. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Next verse. By this, Jesus was speaking of the Spirit. You know, rivers of living water coming out of you, which they that believe on Jesus. Oh, so this is something after you believe. They that believe on Jesus should also receive this. Uh Aha. See, people think they got it all at one shot. There's another step. There's another step for every believer. This is vital. Just as serious and just as important it is for lost people to receive Jesus, it's just as serious as important for believers to receive the Holy Spirit. Now, you don't have to receive the fullness of the Spirit to go to heaven when you die. But there are some powerful, life-saving, life-changing reasons you and I do need to receive the Holy Spirit concerning things before we get to heaven. And this, the devil does not, the devil does not want two things. He does not want lost people receiving Jesus, and he does not want believers receiving the Holy Spirit. Because if you receive the Holy Spirit, you are now an anointed, powerful Jesus in the earth going somewhere to pull people out of the kingdom of darkness and get them on the road to God, for God. And the devil does not want that. He was mad enough when we got saved. Now he don't want us getting other people saved. But here's the news flash. He can't stop us. <laughs> Amen. He can't stop us. Nothing can stop this mighty moving force. With a shout and a praise and a two-edged sword, we got the Word of God. We got the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, there's a lot of people on the earth right now, they just, they just don't want the church around. Because every time they try to do something, we hit it in prayer and mess it up. Every time the devil tries to stir something up, we have a prayer meeting and mess this whole, the whole plans of the enemy up. And there's some people, I think, catching on. Carl and I have talked about this. There's some people right now in the world catching on that, you know what? We really can't do everything we want to do because of this force called the church. Personally, I believe there are some people that know the church is going to be raptured out of here pretty soon when we hear the trumpet sound. And we meet the Lord in the air, the Bible says. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That, we're not talking about physical death. We're talking about an event called the catching away of the saints that happens in the end times where we don't see physical death. It says the Lord will descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. You know, those that are already with him spiritually, they'll get their body, immortal body first. We which are alive and remain... We're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then Paul says, comfort one another with these words. It's the truth. That event is about to happen. I'm not sure how they're going to explain it, but I do think, I, I do think, oh, some spaceship came and got them. Oh, you know, they cleansed off the earth because they were fanatics or whatever. No matter. They can believe whatever they want, but I think there's some people that know it's going to happen, and they want it to happen quick. Because they know they can't fully do everything their lust wants to do until he that withholds is taken out of the way. And then the man of sin will be revealed, the Bible says. Then when the church is gone, when he that withholdeth is taken out of the way, then this mystery and the work of iniquity will come on in full swing. Whom, by the way, the Lord will destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
and all those that hate God and don't want Him and had opportunity to receive Him but rejected Him, there will be a cleaning up after about seven years as we're in heaven, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then the Lord's coming back with millions of His saints. You know, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied that the Lord would come with ten thousands, that's millions, of His saints to clean everything up on this planet. And behold, I make all things new. Anyway, if you, if you, you know, if you're saved, the next greatest thing is be filled with God. Huh? You can have water in a glass, or you can have a glass overflowing with water to where it, what's in you is affecting the outside of you. That's what God wants. Now, the, one of, the, the number one reason we were born again is so God could live in us. In full. But the Bible says there's measures of the filling of the Spirit, just like there's measures of water. John 3, 34 says Jesus had the Holy Spirit without measure. That shows you that there's measures of the Holy Spirit. I say we go all the way. I say we get so filled with the Holy Ghost, we don't even understand ourselves anymore. I say we get so full of God that He's doing things through us more than we're doing things through us. You, you want to know how to be successful? Be filled with the one who's always successful. I mean, I could teach, I could teach a whole series here in the church on 12 ways to be an on-fire, committed Christian, or I could teach on be filled with the Spirit, and it would happen. Because you don't need a lot of do's and don'ts teachings when you're filled with the Spirit. You're in tune yourself. You know, I, I wrote an email recently um, entitled, Be Filled, Be Free. And I found a revelation. I realized the Bible constantly says, be filled with the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit. That's something that happens after you're born again. Be filled with the Spirit. The term, be filled with the Spirit, they were filled with the Spirit. It's all over the New Testament. Talking about people, things that happened to these people after they were saved, born again. Be filled with the Spirit. And I realized... So many people have problems in their life because they have room for them. <laughs> what if you were filled with the Spirit every day of your life? What if you maintained a Spirit-filled life? You'd be free through the simple law of displacement. I mean, how much room is there for depression if you're filled with the Holy Spirit? How much room is there for sadness, fear, doubt? If you're filled, it's called filled... And free. <laughs> oh, Pastor, I got to get this stuff out of my life. I got to get this stuff out of my life. How about get more of Him in your life and it'll push that stuff out of your life? Come on, being filled with the Spirit takes the try out of Christianity. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. And this is what He's talking about here. Read that last verse again, verse 39. This whole rivers of living water coming out of your belly. He said, by this he spoke of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. Now, believers have received Jesus. Right? And now these believers should receive the Holy Spirit. Let me just tell you who the Holy Spirit is. Jesus called him the divine comforter. Comfort like you'll never get from a pill or a bottle or another person or a pillow. We're talking about comfort from another world help you to get to the, past the breaking point where everybody else breaks. This is the Holy Spirit. He won't come in and make things happen, but if you open up, He will come to you and help you. Let me, let me say the first sign of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. Light came on the scene, 186,000 miles a second. Hasn't stopped yet. And the Spirit of God turned darkness into light when he heard the Word of God. And then you get to like around verse 26, and the Bible says, God said, God said, you ready? God said, let us make man in our own image. Who's us? God said, let us? 
What's this us, plural thing? God said, let us make God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit had a conversation one day and said, let's uh, make man in our image. Let us is plural, our is plural. Spirit of God is a part of God. Three in one. That Holy Spirit that was instrumental in creating the universe, bringing light on the scene when there was darkness, that Holy Spirit wants to fill our lives to overflowing every day. But if you want to stay filled, you got to keep drinking. Not thinking only, but drinking, right? Drinking in the Word, drinking in good sermons, drinking in. The Lord wants to fill. You're going to be filled with something every day. My suggestion is play it safe and be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. So when these other things come knocking, they see a no vacancy sign around your neck. You know, fear, depression, paranoia, doubt, anxiety. If you're filled with the Spirit, they go, oh, there's no room here. And they go try to find somebody else who's empty. Not drinking in the Word. Not drinking in the things of God. Well... God has afforded to every believer the most wonderful experience. Now turn to John 16. And I told you I'd tell you the title. You want to know what the title today is? God's will for every believer. Well, pastor, I'm a believer going to heaven. What else is there? Lots! Come on, man. Thank God we're going to heaven. But what about till we get there? I mean, can we actually have something to say about things coming against our lives? Can we actually say, no, stop, not me, not my kids, stay away, sickness, disease, fear, bondage? No! Can we say that, being filled with the Spirit, and actually expect to see results? Absolutely. I know this, um, personal testimony, not saying this applies to anybody else. My mom got filled with the Holy Spirit and started speaking with tongues in St. Joseph's Catholic Church on a Wednesday night prayer meeting, charismatic Catholic prayer meeting downtown when they have the old building. I was an altar boy there. I went to Catholic grade school there, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And one day, you know, I'm, I'm a teenager now, and I'm in junior high school, and, and I'm partying and playing in rock bands, and, and my mom comes home one night from a Wednesday night prayer meeting at the Catholic church, and she says, I got filled with the Holy Spirit tonight, and I speak in tongues. I thought, that's weird, Mom. <laughs> Two things I thought were weird before I was saved. Tithing and speaking in tongues. Tithing in tongues. Two of the things I cherish most now that I am saved are tithing and tongues. Supporting the work of God and speaking in tongues every day of my life. Well, back when I was unlearned, unsaved, went to church all the time, but I wasn't saved. Went to church faithfully once, twice, was an altar. I, I went to church for years and I wasn't saved. How many know being saved is a little more than going to church? <laughs> That's a lot more, actually. Going to church is great, but if you're not saved, you need to get saved. <laughs> so I'm thinking, speaking in tongues, that's weird. You know why I thought it was weird? Because I was ignorant of what the Word of God said about speaking in tongues. Then I got saved, started reading the Bible got filled with the Holy Spirit and realized, this is me personally, this is what I think and what I thought, I now think it's weird not to speak in tongues if it's available. Are you kidding me? Communicating with the Creator of the universe, spirit to spirit, who wouldn't want to do that? It's weird not to do it if it's available. It's weird not to. To me it is. It's weird not to. Are you kidding me? Communing with God from my heart? Tapping into the secrets of the universe? Knowing what to do? Tapping into the future? Come on, the future. The Bible says the Spirit of God will show you things to come. He will talk to you about future events that affect your life so you can be ready. Pray properly. Do whatever you got to do. We prayed just the other night for the police officers in our town when all these riots and the fires were going on. And we prayed. We prayed, God, give our police force the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Help them to know things supernatural that they could no way know except you revealed it to them. You know where the arsonist is. You know where he's going to strike next. Give him a word of wisdom. And I thought, you know what? The gifts of the Spirit operated through non-born-again people in the Old Testament. 
And even if the police aren't born again, our son is born again, filled with the Spirit and works on the force. But even if they're not, Lord, show them. Reveal to them where they're going to strike next. Give them revelation. I'm expecting our police officers to operate in the word of knowledge, to know things supernaturally, like where somebody's hiding out or where they're about ready to strike. Amen. Amen. Well, read this verse here, and you'll see that it ha can happen for every believer. What I'm talking about, this kind of power is available to every believer. Jesus wants us to have it. He does not want his church run over by the junk that's happening in the world. He wants us on top. John 16, are you there? Verse 1. Uh, for time's sake, well, let's just read from verse 1. Jesus said, These things I've spoken unto you, talking to his disciples and his followers, that you should not be offended. Let's just read a few verses, one after another. They're going to put you out of the synagogue, guys, and they're going to, time's going to come that whoever kills you is going to think that they're doing God's service, but they're not. They're just demon-inspired. These things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. And don't be surprised if people come against you vehemently. It's because they don't know Jesus and they don't know the Father. They don't know who you know. And he said, but these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. Now he said, but now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? Next verse. But because I've said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. So he's telling them, he, he's saying, listen, you guys are sad and sorrowful because of me saying I'm leaving you. But he's saying, basically, you don't need to be sad. I'm not going to leave you orphans. I may be physically leaving, but something better than me is coming. Now, I'm not saying better personality-wise, but there is a more profitable thing going to happen when I, Jesus, leave you guys. Yeah, me, the miracle worker, the healer, you know. They're going, Lord, what? Read verse 7. Jesus said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, followers, it is expedient for you that I go away. That word expedient means better for you. What could be better? Oh, come on. What could be better than Jesus leaving, the miracle worker, the healer, the raiser of the dead, casting out devils, setting people free everywhere he goes, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, words from heaven. Our lives are being transformed, saved, and revolutionized. Jesus, what do you mean it's better for us that you go away? Is there something better than being in Jesus' physical presence? I said, is there something better? See, a lot of people say, oh, if I could go back 2,000 years ago and just be in Jesus' physical presence, that would be so wonderful. Newsflash, you got it better now than they had it back then. Jesus was limited to a physical body, and you had to get close to him. Sometimes you had to press through crowds to get to him. Sometimes you had to do a lot of work to get to him. Today's different. Look what he said. I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away, for if I don't go away, the Comforter, Holy Spirit, will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you. Next verse. And when he has come, he'll reprove the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Now notice the only sin lost people are guilty of that keeps them out of heaven. The only sin, singular. They don't believe on Jesus. Let me stop right here for a second. The only sin that takes people to hell and it's not God sending them, it's them staying on the road Adam put them on. The only sin that takes people to hell is not believing on Jesus. Put that scripture back up so they can see it. What's the sin that the Holy Spirit's convincing the world of? The number one sin is, they don't, if, they, if you don't believe on Jesus, there's no hope because He is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. That's the only sin that people are guilty of if they end up in hell. Adultery can be forgiven. Murder can be forgiven. All kinds of crazy things can be forgiven. Stealing, lying, cheating, abuse. But there's one sin that if people don't turn from, no matter how good they were, they'll still end up in a devil's hell. And it won't be God sending them. It'll be them staying on a road Adam put them on that they never got off of by receiving Jesus. So keep going of sin because they believe not on me. The Holy Spirit's come to convince the world of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Next verse. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Next verse. I have yet many things to say unto you, Jesus said, but you cannot bear them now. 
And I just want to share this with you. That's one of the reasons Paul got even more revelation than the disciples here, is because after you could receive the Holy Ghost, you can handle more knowledge and revelation. But Jesus said, look at this. How be it when he, the, he, everybody say he. We're not talking about may the force be with you. This is a personality. This is he. When he, the spirit of truth has come, believers, he will guide you into all the truth. He will help you understand the Bible. For he will not speak of himself. He'll, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is not just going to speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear from the Father and from Jesus, that shall he speak. Now notice. He will show you things to come. Talk to you about your future. That's a heavyweight advantage in this crazy world. To know things about your future. To be able to prepare. Huh? To be able to dodge. To be able to be ready for. Did I say this in the earlier service? Or did I say it in this service about the crystal balls and the tarot cards? Was that the earlier service? Is that this service? No, I haven't said it yet. Well, just this one scripture right here. One of the things the Holy Spirit will do for you is He will help you to know the future in certain areas that you may need to know so you could be prepared for things that are about to happen or to try to change things that are going to happen or pray to, to stop some things that shouldn't happen. This, this is amazing. This is supernatural. If, if people, if the world really knew what Christianity was all about, they'd quit mocking and they'd join our ranks immediately. We're not talking about a little religion and some little crutch. We're talking about doing kingdom business in a fallen world and getting as many people as we can out of the power of darkness unto God before this whole thing's over. And, you know, you see it, crystal balls, tarot cards, astrology, seances, all that is is people's hunger for the supernatural going the wrong way. Their hunger for the supernatural is of God. They're made in the image and likeness of God. They know there's more than flesh and five physical senses. They want it all. And if the church doesn't show them the power of God, the Holy Spirit, what being filled with the Spirit's all about, gifts of the Spirit, I mean, if, if we don't show the world, of course they're going to turn to the false. They're hungry. And every bitter thing is sweet to the hungry soul. So I say we show them the real so they don't want to go to those things. Your kids should not want to uh, dabble in the occult. They should want to go to the church you go to, parents, because you believe in the power of God, not just religiosity. You speak in tongues yourself at home. You worship God yourself at home. You're not fanatics. You just love the Lord. Amen. Come on, man, don't be afraid of your kids veering off into the world. God's got a billion times more power and beautiful things than the world has. Best way to just know that your kids are going to do well, just be on fire for God yourself. Drink from the Lord yourself. Be filled with the Holy Spirit yourself. Talk about Jesus between services. Have Bible studies at home. Get them devotionals for youth. Pray in the Spirit together. Why, Pastor? Because they're going to want the real thing. But if they don't get the real thing, they'll probably fall for some false thing. Um, look at Acts chapter 1. And let me show you a couple scriptures here now that Carla read earlier about the day of Pentecost. Now, the day of Pentecost is really interesting. Pentecost means 50. This is 50 days basically after our Easter season. Okay, the crucifixion, the burial, the resurrection. And so Pentecost means 50. It's an Old Testament uh, word for the Passover and the feasts and the Feast of Trumpets and the things that happened 50 days after the Passover in Egypt. And they celebrated it. And this was the day God chose. Now think about this. God does choose certain days to do certain things. I mean, why did he choose Passover to bring the Holy Spirit into the earth realm? Why is he going to choose a certain day for the rapture? You know, he just likes to use certain days. Um, so this is 50 days after, and I just, I feel led to share this. I'm just going to share that. It might sound like a side journey, but 
You have to understand something, church. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is the answer to a million problems. You know, there's actually Christians in prison today Christians, born again, if they die, they'd go to heaven. But they're in prison today for the simple reason they were not filled with the Spirit the morning of the crime. Because if they were filled with the Spirit the morning of the crime, you know, been drinking in the Word, praying in tongues, they wouldn't have even wanted to abuse that child. They wouldn't have even wanted to steal that thing or break into that place. And it's like if people would just be filled with the Spirit. Being filled with the Holy Spirit helps you to want the right things. And that's 99% of the battle right there. I mean, if we're going to be honest, why do Christians sin? Number one reason, because they want to. They said, no, I don't, but I keep doing it. Well, afterward, you say that, but during the actual time, you have to be honest if you want to get free. Lord, I don't want to do this anymore. You have to pray prayers like, God, I really want this thing, but I don't want to want it anymore. Can you help me? He goes, thought you never ask. And he will help. And again, he will point you to the helper. Come on. Jesus said, I'm going to give you a helper. The NIV says, I'm going to give you a helper, the Holy Spirit. and He will abide with you forever. And I thought, you know what? Jesus went away. He said, a greater day is on, your, on the earth now because I can be everywhere at once through the Holy Spirit, not just physically limited geographically. That's why he said, it's better for you that I go away, because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit cannot be poured out on all flesh. And all these people, Lord, help. Help me, God. Help me, God. Help my marriage. Help me, Lord. I don't want to be lonely anymore. Help me, God, to kick this depression. Help me, God, to overcome this addiction. Help me, God, to receive this healing. Help me, God. Help my family. Help my children. And God says, be filled with the Spirit. And they go, I need real help. That's not from God. Lord, help me. Help me. And God says, why don't you go check out that church that you know believes in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. They go, I'm not going to no crazy church, but God, help me. Help me, God. Help me. And God's saying, there's only one helper in the earth realm, and you're not interested in him. If you want help from the helper, how many of you think it'd be really cool to just be filled with the helper and have all the help you and others would ever need? Just as much as the devil is trying his best to keep people from receiving Jesus, he's also doing his best to try to keep believers from receiving the fullness of the Holy Spirit because therein is the supernatural church that actually makes a difference in its town and its city and its society. Devil's not afraid of us coming together and being nice and leaving. He doesn't want us tapping into the full power. Because when we do, we're a bunch of little Jesuses going out to our valley like he did and seeing the same results he saw. And I thought it was really interesting. Peter committed, Peter committed the greatest mistake of his life around the crucifixion of Jesus. Fifty days later, he's a pillar in the church looked up to, revered, and his shadow is getting people healed of diseases. How do you go from the greatest mistake of your life to denying that you even know Jesus to 50 days later, a pillar in the church and your shadow is getting people healed and God's using you mightily? Uh, he got filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to overcome past guilt? You want to overcome past condemnation? You want to get unstuck from a past that's saying you can't do great things for God anymore? You can never be that pastor. You can never be that prophet. You can never be that person. Uh -uh. You want to get over that and do great things for God? Get filled with the Spirit. It'll help you comprehend supernatural forgiveness. You'll actually rise up and be free. That's one of the benefits of being filled with the Spirit. You get unstuck from your past. And you get back on the path God originally called you to. Oh, pray. You, you understand the blood of Jesus when you're filled with the Spirit. You understand it better and how powerful it is and cleansing it is. Quickly, Acts chapter 1. I'm sorry, yes, Acts chapter 1. Let's just go right to verse 4. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. This is, at, this is right before Jesus ascended to heaven. The Bible says, and they being assembled together with Jesus, and he's risen from the dead, they're like going, wow, he's alive. And the Lord commanded them. And who did he command this to? The church, the believers, people that are already born again. 
He said, guys, I know I told you to go to all the world and preach the gospel, because he did, Mark 16. But before you do that, before trying to do this in your own power, don't leave Jerusalem. Wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard of me. What promise? Next verse. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. So what's Jesus saying? He's saying, yes, you got a great commission. you got to go to all the world, but don't do that yet. A lot of people are trying to do that before this, and that's why they don't see results. They get frustrated. They don't think they're called anymore and all this. He said, if you want to fulfill the great commission, and you want to do the works that I did and the greater works that I told you to do, then you got to have what I had. Okay, so Jesus could not do what he did just because he was the son of God. He did not heal the sick. He did not raise the dead. He did not cast out devils, which means set people free from demonic oppression. He did not turn water to wine. He did not multiply the loaves and fish just because he was the son of God. He was a son of God up to 30 years old, and no miracles, no healings happened at all through his life. But after he was baptized of John in the River Jordan, and John saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove, he had power. And he went in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He came out, overcame every temptation because he was full of the Holy Ghost in yes. quoted scriptures, and he returned in the power of the Spirit, and the meeting was on. <laughs> From that day forward, for three and a half years, he cast out devils. He set the uh, uh, palsy, the paralyzed people free. He healed the sick, healed blind eyes, raised the dead, preached with authority, not like the scribes. He preached with power. He did amazing things. And it was all after the Son of God was full of the Holy Ghost. No wonder Jesus kept saying, uh, the works that I do shall you do also. Uh, why didn't you calm the storm? Uh, why didn't you set him free? Uh, well, you say, listen, guys, you've got me with you right now to do all these things. There's, I'm going to be leaving, and the Holy Spirit's going to come on every one of you, and you'll be able to do these things anywhere, anytime. Yeah. Do you know, the devil just hates that. He had enough trouble with one Jesus. <laughs> now we can all walk wherever we're going with the same Holy Spirit Jesus had and see the results he saw if you believe. Do you believe? That's talking about you? Okay, so in closing, re read this now. G go to the next verse. Jesus said, are we in Acts chapter 1, verse 6? So, okay, so the Lord just said, right, okay, go wait for the promise of the Father. You, you know, you, Holy Spirit's coming, the Holy Spirit's coming, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you believers. Then it says, therefore they were together. They asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now stop right there. <laughs> Jesus is like, guys, the most important thing right now is not about when the kingdom of Israel is restored. It's not about the glories of heaven right now. The most important thing right now is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Are you interested? Will you be filled with? Come on, you need to witness to the world. So they're saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus, this is what he says. Jesus said in verse 7, uh, It's not for you to know the times or the season, guys, which the Father's put in his own power. Come back on the most important thing. Next verse. You'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you'll be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Next verse. And when he had said, spoken these words, while they beheld, he was taken up out of their sight. He was raptured, and a cloud received him out of their sight, like it's going to happen to the church real soon. Next verse. And while they beheld steadfastly toward heaven, he, he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. These were angels. And they said, you men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Yeah. Went up in clouds, he's coming back with clouds. Yeah. But before then, we meet him in the clouds. Yeah. God likes clouds. <laughs> but we're talking about the glory cloud. You know, it looks like snow in the sun, sparkling, glistening yes. clouds, Shekinah glory of God. Well, Jesus said, don't worry about all this other stuff. What you need to be thinking about right now, church, in this dispensation is Holy Spirit and power, so I can be a better witness. Holy Spirit and power, 
Holy Spirit, and power. Huh? Revelation says, the Spirit and the bride say, come, drink of the waters of life freely. The Holy Spirit's just in that mode of bringing people to the Lord. And when you're filled with Him, you're in the mode of bringing people to church, bringing people to the Lord. And that is bringing people to the Lord because we're the body of Christ. So one final scripture. Can you add one final scripture? Go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. They're all praying. They're doing what the Lord said. They're waiting for the promise of the Father. They're in the upper room. There are about 120 of them. I don't know why there's only 120. He appeared to over 500 brethren at once. Some people just don't take it serious. You know, even if the Lord appears to you, I guess. I don't know. But it says right here, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, that time, that date... Oh, my goodness. I'm so excited to talk to Joseph Morris tonight. I'm going to ask him some interesting questions. I, I, I'm going to ask him some very interesting questions. I'm going to ask him about that meteorite that's called Wormwood that's supposed to hit the earth or come by. They say NASA said it's supposed to come by the earth in 2029, like 13 miles from the earth, 13,000 miles from the earth. I think it's probably going to hit the earth personally. They just, I mean, NASA's not going to tell us that. Panic on their hands. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, Behold, John said, I saw a mountain on fire hit the earth. And it hit the, the third of the th uh, life in the waters was destroyed. And, and another one hits the earth. And it said this one was called Wormwood. Yeah. There's, got, there's some things going to hit the planet. I'm not going to be here. Do you know why? Because that's the great tribulation, and we are not appointed unto wrath. Matter of fact, a lot of this evil that attracts these things can't even be released till the church is gone. And then that man of sin will be revealed, whom the Lord shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Hmm? Interesting times. <laughs> I'm going to ask him some really interesting questions. I'm going to talk to him about some end time stuff that maybe we've never heard before. I'm just going to See if I can pull it out of him. He'll be in Tulsa. I'll be here in the studio. And we'll be on Zoom, but we'll be broadcasting on Facebook, Vimeo, and YouTube, so you can watch it at 7 o'clock. But we're going to ask him some point-blank questions. He's probably not even ready for that, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to pull it out of him. I'm going to pull it out of him. How many are glad that for the church, this life is about over? But our job now is to take as many people as we can with us to heaven. You know, throw shyness aside. Throw nervousness aside and just talk to your neighbor. Just say, how you doing during this time? Is there anything I can do for you? You'd absolutely love our church. You get healed right during the worship service if you're hungry enough. How many think it's time to do that? Waitresses, clerks, neighbors, family, friends. It's time. Get them out of hopelessness, into hope. You're empowered to do it. Right? He'll come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Grand Junction, Mesa County, Colorado, and the uttermost parts of the world. I know it said Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, but our Jerusalem is Grand Junction, right? And that's what, we're, that's what the Holy Spirit came on us for. Number one reason He came on us is to be a witness. And of course, to give you anything you need to be a witness, to help you in any way you need physically to be a they brought minister. So let's read it and close. The Pentecost was fully come. Look, look, they were all with one accord in one place. I am so thankful for online. I am so thankful for live stream. But if you can be here in these last days, you're going to want to not just be with us in spirit, you're going to want to be in one place. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how cool it would be to watch this meeting online. Read the next verse. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. I'm sure you, you and, and thank God again for online. We're going to keep streaming because there's some people who cannot be here. And there's some people who have chosen not to be here because that they just, they want to play it safer. And that's great. I agree. Praise God. But meetings like this, you don't want to miss if you can be there. Honey, what was that? What was that? I just heard something on the TV. I don't know, some wind just manifested in the room. I saw fire everywhere. We should have went to church today. <laughs> I want to be in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. It sat upon each of them. God showed up. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You will find in Acts chapter 10 that another meeting happened. You didn't see the same fire and wind because that was his initial entrance into the earth. Right now, it's not, oh God, let us have a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. Oh God, let us see tongues of fire. He's already here. He doesn't need to blow again. Now it's just receive the Holy Spirit. Just receive by faith the Holy Spirit. If you're a believer, you can receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit and speak with other tongues by simply asking Jesus to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And when He does and does His part, do your part and speak in tongues. Come on, man. If He's going to do His part, we need to do our part. It didn't say the Holy Spirit spoke in tongues. They spoke with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. In other words, they're not stepping out and speaking. Holy Ghost has got nothing to do. Oh, do you see it, church? Stand up with me. Let's pray this prayer before we leave. Now, we had a Why Tongues book to give everybody in the earlier service, but they're all gone. Praise God, we, we preached the same thing in the early service. So um, we'll get some more in. So, but until then, just call the church if you have any more questions about this. We have limited time right now. But let's pray. I, Paul, Paul came to Ephesus, all right? Paul the Apostle came to Ephesus found certain disciples, and asked them a very, very important question. And I believe the Lord wants you to hear this question right now. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through 6, Paul the Apostle said, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Really good question. If you believe in Jesus, you're going to heaven. You got that taken care of. But he's asking, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? What are we talking about? We're talking about receiving in full the comforter of all comforters, the helper of all helpers, the glory and power of God, the creator of the universe in your life. He's not pushy. He won't make you do anything. He won't make himself do anything. But when you open up, and you receive Him, He'll fill you as much as you want to be filled. And therein is so many people's deliverance and victory and strength. I know there's people that are sad, and I know there's people feeling gray and depression right now. The Holy Spirit wants to comfort. He wants to hug you. But He ain't going to hug you if you don't open the door. He's not like that. But you open the door, He will, he will relieve you from fears you've been battling for years. He'll relieve you from doubt and unbelief and confusion and problems and darkness and even help you get quick in your mortal body so sickness leaves. Oh, how we need the Holy Spirit. And all this is geared toward putting us in a position where our witness to the world is something they want. Who's not going to want the effects of you being filled with the Spirit? Peace and joy and victory and stability and health and prosperity. See, Jesus wants us filled so we can show others what He can do for them. So if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to hear some speaking in tongues in just a few minutes. I speak in tongues every day of my life. Paul said, I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. Jesus said, believers shall speak with new tongues. Speaking in tongues is wonderful. The devil's a liar. And some preachers are a little off too. Speaking in tongues is a gift from God. Never talk down about a gift from God just because you don't understand it. So if you want to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, let's pray this prayer. But, but before that, if you're not saved, say these words. All of us say it in affirmation, but say it in support. First, receive Jesus if you haven't. Say this, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I just drink in right now. You and your word. I ask you to help me to live for you. You're my Lord now and my Savior. I believe God raised you from the dead. It really happened so I could be free. And now I'm saved. And now I want you all to pray this. If you want to be filled with the Spirit, and I, you do, believe me, you do. Please receive the fullness of the Spirit this morning before you leave. Just say these words, Jesus, I'm a believer. You made me new on the inside. 
I'm born again. But I also want to be filled with the Spirit. I want the same experience of being filled with the Spirit and speaking in other tongues and the rest of a powerful life in my life. Right now, Jesus, I'm asking you, fill me with the Holy Spirit of God. I believe you're doing it. And just like in the Bible, I'm going to praise you in a language I've never learned. Here I go, from my heart, Anta boko sonjete andinia ete framana e cregieto zobre vacata le vejiki otolomo. You know, don't try, just flow, just flow with it, just speak from your belly. Bingra giata. This is part of the rivers of living water that flow from your innermost being. Brande eshime ku utana mavondongre giente, brianto grofono osteva, obre cafiande, esusumo ku ucho. Just jump on in. The river's good, it's fine. The Lord loves you. He wants to help you. Brondonche ke eka divintilia pa anto grovone e giviante zipafro jomokoote vinda e gregiande le beanto brondolo fro poco ustolo vocoote pre. I heard the Spirit of God say, I'm going to say this through the word of prophecy, that this is the beginning for a lot in this church and this church as a whole. For the supernatural will begin to increase in your church and in your midst simply because it has to happen. The end of all things is at hand and the world needs more than a pat on the back. They need the power of God. So as you begin to speak in other tongues and pray in tongues every day, the supernatural will be stirred up and the glory of the Lord will increase and the powers of darkness will be pushed back and the things of the enemy will be brought to nothing for the power of God shall rise in its church in this hour and the glory of the Lord will be seen and many will come to the brightness of our rising. Multitudes will come out of darkness because they're looking for the real thing and they're going to see it in this church and other churches as you contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints, rise up in the power of God, speak in tongues every day, and it will lead you into more gifts of the Spirit that the world around you needs. So be faithful with other tongues, and you'll see more power in your life. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, as I was studying this, it was so interesting because it says that being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in other tongues preceded major church growth. 3,000 souls in one day on the day of Pentecost. We didn't read it. You can read it at home. Read the rest of chapter 2 in Acts. It said 3,000 souls were added to the Lord in one day. What did that follow? A meeting just like this, where we get filled with the Holy Spirit, started speaking in tongues, and it led to amazing church growth. People coming out of hopelessness into hope, out of darkness into light, from the power of Satan unto God. And it started in a Holy Ghost meeting where people were hungry, they got filled, they spoke with tongues, bang! Church started growing like we've never seen in our time. A couple days later, 5,000 are added to the Lord, not counting women and children. Now they're up to about 10,000 in a few days. And it all started with being filled with the Spirit and speaking with tongues. It just helps us to do what God's called us to do. Rachel, I believe it's for you. I, I, I don't know what else to say except come back, join our prayer meetings online, see us tonight at 7 o'clock on Facebook or YouTube. Rachel, you're free. You got the rest of the service. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to sing a song. This song is called The Blessing, and we want to pray this blessing over you as you leave today and if you did pray that prayer to be filled with the spirit for your first time at the end of the song please come see our altar ministry workers that are up here they are up here for you they're going to want to minister to you help you with anything that they can so let them be a blessing to you and then join in with us as we sing this thank you father god Thank you. 
favor be upon me and the thousand generations for your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and a thousand generations for your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor upon you and a thousand generations for your family and your children and their children and their children. And their children. 